Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Stephanie with Georgia Municipal Association, and we are here today with um, Randy Griffin, and we will be talking about new market tax credits. We're glad that you guys can join us. Uh, just a, a couple quick uh, housekeeping items. Um, if you can put your questions into the chat as we go along, we'll um, try to address those at the end. If we're not able to, we will um, do some follow-up with you. Um, we do have your emails, um, so we can do some follow-up. Um, but Randy will also be providing uh, contact information uh, for you to contact him as well. Um, I'm gonna be placing a form in the chat um, that you can download, uh, and we are gonna move forward and get started. So Randy, go ahead and take it away. Well, Thank you very much, Stephanie, for uh, hosting us today. And uh, this is an, uh, a new initiative that's set up for Georgia. Uh, we appreciate Larry Hansen, uh, who, uh, with the, the, the City Foundation, um, Georgia Municipal Association, for assisting us in uh, getting the word out about this program around the state of Georgia. Um, I'm going to go through a slideshow today with you, but joining us on the phone and who we asked to join us and who we're working with on, on this is Iowa Community Development will all be also be part of this presentation. And really what we want to do is just drive home with you uh, what uh, the state of Iowa has been able to do with new market tax credits. There is a general misunderstanding of tax credits in Georgia. And, um, and because of that, um, we, um, you know, we, we get a lot of questions from a lot of folks who just don't understand the program. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through a slideshow uh, with you and hopefully everybody can see the slideshow from the beginning. And um, our company, CSRE Business Lending, um, is a, uh, is a nonprofit uh, certified development company of the SBA. We were formed in 1979. And there's other companies around Georgia that do what we do. Uh, some terrific organizations in the metro Atlanta area and scattered, scattered throughout the state. But our company is a, is a nonprofit uh, certified development company of SBA. It's done 835 projects, totaling more than $723 million. Uh, our portion on those loans has been a little under uh, $300 million. Uh, we're a certified development company of SBA. We're an accredited lender of SBA, a Department of Commerce lender, and a USDA IRP lender. But uh, as we've traveled the state through the years, my family's from South Georgia. I was born in Columbus at Fort Benning. Um, when my dad was in the Army, I went to high school in Macon, played football at uh, Georgia Southern, went to Georgia Southern University in Statesboro. As we traverse the states, the smaller metro areas of the state, we just don't feel like we've done enough um, as a nonprofit for businesses and communities. And this is an initiative, uh, once we saw how it worked in other states, is something that we wanted to, to try here in Georgia. Um, you look at some of the projects we've done through our 30 year track record around the state. Um, the Georgia Theater in Athens after the fire, we did an SBA 504 loan on that public defense in Bryan County. Uh, completed, uh, we did the Alto Scientific uh, project, a terrific project that was in Eaton area uh, that moved 62 high tech, high paying jobs to Georgia. Uh, agribusinesses we've done, Southern Veneer and Fitzgerald. Uh, that's in there, uh, industrial park, and uh, processes a lot of, of timber around the state. Uh, project we're doing right now that is really just one of the, uh, a really unique project, the Sweetgrass Dairy in Thomasville. Uh, a lot of folks don't realize that when you get on a Delta Airlines flight and you order a snack pack and you get the cheese, that's Georgia cheese coming from Thomasville on Sweetgrass. And a, a really cool project we're doing downtown of Macon right now in conjunction with Newtown and uh, Mercer University for the new, uh, the new brewery going in, new event venue, uh, that we had one of our board meetings there. We were one of the initial uh, initial meetings there. The state, a great venue, especially for some of the municipalities, have a meeting place in the center of the state. I'd highly recommend that, uh, having our first meeting there. Um, new market tax credits, you'll see in a second, they're an absolute game changer. Um, when you are looking to do a key economic development project, you will have a lot of developers, a lot of companies that will show up and they will want uh, new market tax credits. And as we looked at our colleagues around the country that do SB 504 loans, the state of Iowa and the state of Oklahoma really uh, came to mind. Our colleagues in Iowa, our colleagues in Oklahoma have received over 700 million in allocations. And one of the key things that's essential is Georgia 
traditionally is one of the top seven most underserved states that has not had uh, new market tax credits. If you look at comparison to Georgia, and Oklahoma, and Iowa, and you look at the number that they have received, um, you can see the, 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 the variance here. You know, Oklahoma on a per capita ratio has received three times uh, the number that uh, Georgia has. Iowa's almost received uh, two times the number that Georgia has. Um, to receive new market tax credits, you either need to be a, a CDI under the Treasury Department, that's who this program comes through, or you need to be a CDE through the Treasury Department. There are four Georgia entities uh, that are CDEs that have received allocations, and that's SunTrust Community Development, which has a national service footprint. They've received six, 643 million. Atlanta Emerging Markets, which is a terrific organization in Metro Atlanta that has done some transformational projects in the Metro Atlanta area with the credits. Uh, they've received 177 million. Carver Financial in, uh, in Savannah is one of 26 African-American owned chartered banks in the country. They've received two allocations. Most recently, they got one um, in the month of July. And then Habitat for Humanities National Headquarters in Atlanta got a $30 million allocation. Um, in 2020, three organizations were awarded, SunTrust in Atlanta, uh, Carver, and Habitat for Humanity all got uh, allocations. One of the interesting things in the COVID and in response to COVID and, re and, and rebounding economically that's happening is in the next round, Congress has already announced and instead of 3.5 billion being awarded in allocations, there's gonna be 5 billion awarded in allocations. And the latest markup on the House version of the bill has seven billion in, uh, in allocation that's gonna be awarded. So for us to be applying in this, in this pool that's gonna have a substantially bigger award pool, we're pretty excited about that. Um, what kind of projects have been done in Georgia? That's a question that comes up. And if you're in some of these communities, uh, you can uh, you can see uh, the Ron Clark Academy in uh, in Atlanta is one of the latest with Atlanta Emerging Markets to receive a new, receive a new market tax credit. Some of you are aware with that. It is a terrific magnet school uh, for underserved kids in the metro Atlanta area, south of Atlanta. Uh, they're doing the Performing Arts Center right now. But if you go down the left-hand column and you look at the names of who have received the deals in the state of Georgia, you see one repeating name, and that is Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. Um, if you go to the right-hand side, you can see who the, um, who the, CD, the community development agencies who participated in these projects have been, and you can see some national players have participated in those. Some of our state, such as Harvard and Atlanta Emerging Markets, but, um, but not a bunch of Georgia companies uh, that, are, um, that are working on these, and that's one of the reasons why we decided to get in it. Um, if you look at the state of Georgia in this map that I put up before you, and you, go, you can go to a website called Novogratic, novogratic.com. You can put in uh, the address, put your city name in, in a map search area, and it will show you which areas in your community are el eligible for new market tax credits. Anything in red or yellow on this map is eligible for new market tax credits. What that is, is that is deemed to be a low income census tract according to the Census Bureau. The yellow areas are eligible, but they do not have severe distress. The red areas have severe distress. The gray areas are not eligible for new market tax credits. And you can see in spite of having not a whole lot of eligible area in Atlanta and glancing at the map, they've received a lot of the uh, credits. Our model is gonna be tailored to work on areas outside of Metro Atlanta, predominantly non-metropolitan areas of the state and the smaller metro areas of the state. Um, Albany, Macon, um, Columbus have never had, to our knowledge, a new market tax credit deal funded in their communities, which is a, a little bit hard to believe. We, if you look at the state of Iowa, uh, and Dan Robeson and Steve Cruz have joined us from Iowa Community Development, and they have done an outstanding job of getting 300 million in allocations for the state of Iowa. If you zoomed in on this map, there would be uh, more areas you could see at a ground level area, but it gives you a little bit of comparison when you look at Iowa versus looking at Georgia. So when the Treasury Department says that Georgia is underserved for new market tax credits, that's a pretty, um, pretty um, 
good example to show you that and sort of drives home the reason why we are trying to, to, to drive this initiative for Georgia, working with a bunch of, of economic development organizations uh, in the state. Um, for that reason, since Iowa has experience in it, we've got a, a track record of knowing uh, the folks at, at, at ICDF, uh, Dan and Steve, who, who joined us on this call. Uh, we've entered an MOU for services. Essentially, what we will do is we will apply for the credits and we'll utilize their expertise since we're new to it uh, in this first round. And, and hopefully, uh, it'll lead to partnership that will lead more applications as we go forward. But they've got all the compliance folks, all the backroom staff, uh, to, uh, to, to make sure that, this, that, that we structure the deals correctly to stay in compliance with, with Treasury. And more importantly for the communities on the, on the phone, and we've heard this from Georgia Power, we've heard it from the, the Georgia Department of Economic Development, we've heard it from ECG, uh, we've heard it from uh, the Georgia Municipal Association, repeatedly during, this, the, during the last 18 months while we've been planning this, is there's just a lack of understanding of credits just to have someone to talk to about credits in the state of Georgia. It has an understanding because there's just not a basic understanding of the credits. Uh, what do we get with Iowa Business Growth? We get a, a company a lot like us uh, that uh, is an SBA lender that is going to serve solely uh, just the state of Georgia. Um, if we are successful in getting this, we will be the first entity that is targeting solely the state of Georgia, the entire state, uh, with our, our new market tax credits. They received 320 million in six allocations. And after we talk through sort of the mechanics of what, uh, what the new market tax credit is, we're gonna give a couple of examples of how they use those uh, to win a deal. I was talking to some folks in Bainbridge uh, earlier this week down in the, in the extreme Southwest Georgia corner of the state, um, talking to a bank there. And we were talking about how the credits could be used. And the simple example I gave was, is Bainbridge sits on the state line and is really tied to Dothan, Alabama. And if you have an industry that has a location in Dothan and you have an industry that may be located in Bainbridge or Cairo or Thomasville or Dawson or one of those areas in that corner of the state and they are looking to expand their plant, um, Iowa has had an example where uh, they have circumstance like that and they were able to put the credits on the table um, and create essentially a forgivable loan uh, that we're gonna walk through in a second that essentially turns into free equity for that company. So if, if Bainbridge is offering that and Dothan is not, and they're going to double the size of their plan, they're probably gonna pick Bainbridge if they can get a new market tax credit. Um, the other thing we get with, with uh, Iowa Community Development and working with ICDF and, and with Dan and Steve and this partnership that we form is we pick up their their three-legged stool, if you will, their team that has worked together. One of the key things about this that I like about it in using these that have worked together on these transactions, uh, Novogratic is the nation's top new market tax credit accounting firm. Um, CDEs, community entities in all 50 states use them as, Twain, as they do Twain Financial Partners. Twain Financial, if you think of it, is sort of the collection agency that sort of to and from and handles its administrative functions. And then Jared Minkoff, who is also the, the um, Iowa Community Development Attorney, has agreed to, to represent us on these. And these three groups and these three, the, the three individuals who represent them, they work together on multiple transactions. And that just creates a comfort level of speed where new markets can get done faster. And that's something we've heard in Georgia that when they have been done and people have looked at them, they've backed off of them because they, they've been clunky and slow. And we think by having three people who have worked together and have success doing this, that, uh, that we're gonna be able to team up and help keep costs down uh, and get these, these transactions done. And so what is a new market tax credit? The key and the ask of all of you in the municipality today is gonna to be to help us with our pipeline. It is extremely competitive to get a new market tax credit uh, allocation. Uh, all the entities who apply, uh, our applications will be in, in November. Um, one of the things that, that we have to do is we have to be accountable to low-income communities. So we have worked with Georgia Power, uh, the Georgia Association of Economic Developers, um, the um, Georgia Department of Economic Development, the Department of Community Affairs to form a board of 12 people uh, that are on that board. 
Uh, we have uh, four of the state's top economic development organizations in Georgia cities, uh, the Georgia Municipal Association with Larry, their, uh, their director is on our advisory board. Uh, Daryl Hampton is on there from ECG Georgia. Uh, Andrew Schreiser from, from, uh, from Alaska, who is the chair of the Georgia Association of Economic Developers uh, is on the board. And we've got a represent, representative, uh, Matt Fauché, uh, from Georgia Power that is on the board. So all the organizations are supporting us on this and helping us find allocation, helping us find projects for our, uh, our, our application. But the allocation is the key. Um, and we're going to walk you through an example in a second, but let's say that we apply, we're going to apply for $100 million in allocation, and let's say we're awarded a $50 million allocation in the next round. We would then have the ability to take that 50 million and allocate it to individual use in the state, working with local communities and working with uh, often with lenders in the same communities. If we put a $10 million tax credit on a transaction, it creates a, a three a 39% tax credit that an investor can buy. And so what happens is, is those uh, tax credit investors, they uh, the businesses, they, they could conceivably take that $3.9 million tax credit. And when people think about new market tax credits, they think, okay, it's a tax credit going to the business or industries located in my community. That's not the way it works. The business uh, in the community is going to want cash. They need cash now to open. And so what happens is, is, is we go out and we monetize those credits. So we would take a, a, uh, that $3.9 million tax credit that an investor could take uh, 500,000 the first three years in this example, and 600,000 the final four years. And we would walk out to a, uh, an investor who wants to buy these credits. There's private companies we met with in Atlanta yesterday that want to buy the credits. Big banks often want the credits. A variety of folks who want to buy these credits. Uh, a lot of the Georgia banks are interested in buying these credits. But the bank uh, then looks at it, and, and let's say, you know, we're working, we use an example, we'll say Synovus, which is a $40 billion bank in many communities in Georgia. Synovus can make the tactical decision to say, you know what, instead of us paying $3.9 million in taxes over the next seven years, that are going to go into the federal treasury uh, and going to go to all 50 states, we would rather instead to give uh, 75 cents on the dollars for those credits, save ourselves a million dollars, and we can help in this project that's going to one of the communities we serve, and we can direct this investment, this 2.9 million to go into that community versus going into the federal treasury. And so it's a very powerful tool. It's a huge impact for the, for the banks from a community benefit standpoint, uh, not only uh, a tax saving standpoint. So let's say Synovus decides that we've got a project and we're gonna put a $10 million allocation on, they decide to buy this credit for 75 cents on the dollar. That would create $2.9 million in funds that would be given to us. New market tax credits are the most complicated uh, financial transaction you probably ever see in your life. For that reason, it is layered uh, with attorneys. Um, sometimes it has consultants involved in it. Uh, and for that reason, a lot of capital comes out of this. So up front, you're going to have transaction cost of 400,000, and there may be additional cost uh, that get into that. But in this example, let's say there's 400,000 in legal fees to sell the credits, uh, to do um, the necessary things that, are, that need to be done to get it closed. It would create an economic benefit to the business of $2.5 million. The remainder of that 2.5 million is going to come in the in the form uh, of a uh, leveraged loan, usually. Sometimes it can be self-funded. Uh, there's a couple of deals we're talking to in our pipeline that are self-funded deals that we've looked at. In other words, the company's gonna put their own capital in, be their own leveraged lender. But uh, in this example, let's say they need a leveraged loan, and we're going back to the Synovus example. Synovus bought the credits for 2.5. They also make a seven, million dollar, $7.1 million loan as a leverage loan in this. And that's how the 10, 10 million comes in. It comes in in two pieces, in a leverage loan and in a, uh, the sale of a tax credit. Um, at the bottom is a key thing I want the cities and the municipalities and the economic developers on the phone uh, to really uh, get coming out of this call. It serves two purposes, and you'll see that uh, on the next slide when I'm gonna turn it over to Dan and let him walk through uh, the credit, what I just went over, we're going to go through on a flow chart as well to sort of 
we've walked through the second time. But um, it fills a gap in a project. It's a project that the, a new market deal could be a community facility. It could be a, um, an economic development project. It could be a YMCA. It could be a food bank. Um, it could be the redo of a historic building in a downtown into a mixed use. It could be to uh, put a grocery store in a grocery desert in downtown Albany and put 34 loft apartments uh, in it. Uh, so there's a variety of reasons that it, it, it purposes it could be used. Uh, the gap in the financing is everybody wants a project done, but there's just simply not enough money in the capital stack that the company has raised to have all the money they need to make the in investment. So new market tax credits can be sold in this example. Uh, let's say we had a $30 million project, we put this $10 million allocation on it, it would essentially create $2.5 million in free money coming into the project. Um, it's also an incentive, the first example I'll walk through, when you have a project that's in a corner of a state, and maybe uh, they have a location in, in our state and a location in a neighboring state, and they're looking to expand, and they're talking to the economic developers and municipalities about what tools they can put on the table, Oftentimes, if you can put a, a tax credit on there, uh, it's it's the difference in, in getting the deal done or not getting the deal done. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan uh, Robeson with, uh, and Steve Cruz with Iowa Community Development that we're partnering with, uh, with, with ICDF. And they're going to sort of walk you through this chart just, just one more time. And then a couple examples to sort of show you some unique projects that they have done in Iowa and sort of how the, the program has worked. So Dan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Hey, thanks, Randy, and thanks, everyone, for being on this call. And, and uh, you know, the goal at the end of the day is to just make everyone aware of, of this economic development uh, potential um, game changer, I guess. Randy used that term earlier. Uh, as Randy said, we hadn't had any allocation in Iowa, so this, uh, uh, you know, when we got in the game. And... Um, We've done, you know, in excess of 20 deals now, $320 million of projects. And as we're talking, you know, this audience that we're talking to, our most recent deal that we uh, just closed is with the city of Corville. It's a community uh, in southeast Iowa. There's a Division One school there, University of Iowa. And uh, we're helping them with a project that we may just touch on in a little bit. This structuring chart... Um, you know, it, it's valuable in that maybe it justifies a little bit the unfortunate uh, part of new market tax credits, which is that uh, it's, it is complicated to do the structure um, and it gets expensive. And the reason that happens is because the IRS is involved. These are a tax credit and all the way through the structuring, uh, what everyone's concerned about and work, working on is to make sure that we stay within the boundaries and IRS doesn't come and disallow the, the structure. And so, unfortunately, uh, there's just a lot of moving parts to do a new market tax credit deal. At the end of the day, the value or the benefit of the credits always outweighs the cost and brain drain of doing a deal. We've never, um, we've never had a deal that's gotten halfway or part of the way into the structuring and they want out or, We've never had a deal at the end say they'd never do it again. We actually, what, what our experience is, once we do a deal in a community, that community uh, comes back to us. We've, um, I don't know, in Dubuque, Iowa, we've probably done four different projects there. Des Moines, Des Moines Iowa, we've, we've probably done four deals. And so um, that's just a testament to its complication, but um, the value at the end at the end of the day. The, uh, the two videos that we couldn't get to work, I highly encourage everyone to take a look at them. Um, this structuring chart that we have up right now, typically when we get into the details of this, you know, we can talk for an hour and a half on the structure, and which, you know, I'm sure very few people on this call want to do. But the, um, the challenge that we had with, the, with one of the videos was at, as a, uh, organization, we wanted a couple minute video that animated sort of what, what the credits were about, how they worked. And so if, if uh, after this call, you guys could uh, all take a look at, at 
that video, it, you know, I think it gives a really good quick overview of the credits. And then uh, the, the video that we started to see, that is uh, three or four different projects that we actually closed and it's the projects themselves speaking. So um, there is a testament out there that this does work for communities and, um, and there is value. This structure, Randy went through it with uh, the slide before, um, but, but essentially there, you know, when we do a transaction, there's typically, you know, um, uh, you know, a lender and a business work together and figure out a way to structure or finance a project and come up with the capital required to do it. Um, in a new market transaction, because there's an investor buying the credits, then the piece of equity that the investor is bringing to the table is usually the equity that the business would have to strip out of their balance sheet or out of their liquidity or find investors um, for or even you know other um, economic development incentives for and so uh, you know by adding that extra player to the table the investor um, and then also having to run it through the CDE that's the middle triangle which is us the the allocatee or the the organization that has the credits and hopefully that would be Randy um, then we flow this money down through to the business and and um, you know. Randy or Steve or I, I mean, you know, Randy, feel free to give uh, folks our phone number too. If, if someone wants to go really deep and talk about this, actually, I started, started to kind of enjoy getting into the weeds on the structure, but um, just to not put everyone to sleep today, I'm going to stop there and just let folks absorb that uh, on their own time. And if they want to, you know, reach out to Randy or reach out to Steve or I, we'd be happy to, to go at a little bit deeper level. What we, when Steve and I are out in Iowa, so we represent, we, our footprint is Iowa and that's it. We, we uh, you know, we have thought about going to contiguous states and, and at the end of the day, we just decided that we were gonna focus on Iowa. That's where we, where we live and, and uh, work. And, um, and so we've just stayed within the state of Iowa. But when we're out talking with, organizations like you on the phone really what what we want them what we want to leave them with is there is all this detail in terms of structure and there is complication and it gets expensive but at the end of the day uh, the value outweighs all that and really what we want economic development professionals to know is that they have a, a low income census tract that where they you know where they uh, work you know if you've got a low income census tract in the area that you serve that's a huge advantage uh, because if you have two projects as Randy touched on this if you have two projects that haven't landed and, and have the ability to go either one location or the other and one has new market tax credit uh, census tracts you've got an advantage over that competition I view that that other location as competition to your market and so you have the ability to bring something to the table that your competitor can't do and so if if you um, leave this meeting um, knowing that that you know where the maps are and and that you have a low income census tract then this has been a successful meeting uh, knowing that you've got a census tract is critical and so um, what we ask communities that have low-income census tracts is to understand this a little bit um, and or deep if you want to go deep we'll go deep but really what we're asking is if you have a low-income census tract you need to call Steve or I in Iowa in this case it would be Randy and let them know when you have a project and and re we really don't even uh, want you to or at least in Iowa we don't want you to have to try to sort through is this eligible not eligible what if it's close to the line what if it's in a yellow area versus a red area you know what if it's even on the line could you know our our position is call us rather than not call us so often we go out and talk to communities and uh, we find out oh they didn't call us because they thought they understood something that made it ineligible. And nine times out of 10, there would have been a way for us to do that. So 
So, so in summary, let me let me sort of walk this. So let's say uh, one of the, the cities or counties or economic development, you have a $30 million project in your community and that company, you're going to do an industrial revenue bond for $20 million and they still need uh, some gap in there. They need to get a bank loan. Um, they still got a whole, whole, and we take a state of South a business like Wood, get a star A community investment to meet our IRS regulations, they would fund it into this LLC, and you see it's by Treasury. They would put that money into us, it would come down into us, and we would loan it to the business over here on loan number one at whatever conditions this lender put on it. The rate, the collateral, uh, any kind of, of conditions in the loan agreement. But then same scenario, let's jump over here and say Sonova says instead of paying that 3.9 million in taxes, they want to keep that here in the community and they want to buy the credit. We said on both sides of the transaction the investment, um, that money went in. Uh, it will come down into us, and after fees go out, uh, economic benefit will flow down to the to the customer. And this loan B that we would make this loan would really be at one percent plus our cost, at the rate of four percent, four to four and a half percent by the time you're done. That Novus bought these credits up here. They're going to take a credit over seven years. When you hit the seventh year and it's over, they've taken the credit, and they and the company has paid us interest every year back up into us, and we've paid it back into the back to seven years. When that last credit's taken, we hand them a note back. They tear it up, and so it essentially for a thousand dollar you know agreed upon fee up front. They buy the note back. So essentially, you've got $10 million flowing down through the structure into them. They only owe $7,075,000 at the end of the day. It's interesting. And that's why they're so valuable. That's why they can be the difference in a, in a, in a project in a low-income community. So I thought it would be helpful. Um, the, the recapture potential has never happened in these, and that's if, you, that's if we were to get in trouble for not handling the transactions. We think of the partnership we have set up. Of Ohio community development, that's not going to happen. But what I thought would really be uh, helpful, and hopefully we can get this to work on the, is for Dan to walk through a couple of examples that they did in Iowa, and we'll start with this one that that uh, that is maybe one of the most successful economic development projects I've ever heard of being done by a community, and it was done with new market tax credits. So Dan, why don't you walk through this one? Okay, hey, it. thanks, Randy. So um, this is, uh, as you can see, it's IBM. Uh, one fall day, I get we get a call, and um, this community, it's a community of about 50,000 people in Iowa on the river, Mississippi River, eastern part of the state, and they had been contacted by a slight selection firm that um, had been working with them for a while, but IBM had narrowed down, I think, two or three communities where they wanted to do their first North American plant expansion in 20 years, and so... Uh, a group of the, the group in Dubuque um, had this building. It was the Economic Development Group. One floor of this building it, it was being used at the time, and only partially. It was a, I don't know, early 1900 uh, uh, department store that had turned into some office space, but really was being underutilized right in the heart of their downtown along the Mississippi River. So the issue was. IBM had a, uh, certain specs that they wanted the building built out to. And when they, when they put the capital stack together for that build out, the, the other requirement IBM had was uh, what they were willing to pay for a triple net lease. And there was a gap there. You know, they could build it out, but the, the, the uh, lease would not cover the debt service for the build out. And so they, they were really stuck and not being able to, uh, Consider doing the uh, the deal. And so this slide shows it was a forty-five million dollar project. Um, we uh, put 
$10 million of our allocation and went out and found, actually went out and found two other allocatees like us that could come to Iowa. So I mentioned earlier, we're a, uh, just an Iowa organization, but there's some national organizations out there. And so we reached out to two other CDEs and between the three of us, we put $30 million of allocation in and that $30 million brought uh, a little bit over $6 million of equity to the table. Uh, At closing, and so that six million dollars, after six and a half, there was no debt service on. It was, uh, it felt like free capital, and so that covered the commitment and the build that world that a town of fifty thousand people in Iowa land, but big blue. Brought 1,300 jobs, the annual payroll is just under $60 million. Um, and so it was, this is, you know, like a poster child of what new markets is meant to do. It's meant to bring economic stimulus to an area where they're, where it's considered uh, low income. Or, and, and, and so there's ways to do that. There, you know, direct full-time jobs is a real simple way to do that. And this is an example of that. There are other ways to do that that aren't direct jobs, and that's this next project. Randy, if you wanna, or whoever is running the slides, flip to the next one. Okay, so yeah. So this is, um, this is now this project, so uh, let me just stop here a second. The project I just talked to you about, IBM, highly sophisticated, you know, they flew their Learjets in with, you know, their 20 accountants and attorneys, and, and um, everybody, gathered around a table and we worked through the structure and did the deal. This project, on the other hand, is in a town of uh, 25,000 people in northern Iowa. The only thing around it is a cornfield and bean fields. And uh, it had this property that was vacant. The bricks were falling off of it. It was actually uh, getting to be not only an eyesore, but a danger to the community. And so, there was a, a group of um, local individuals that had formed this not-for-profit and, and took ownership of this. But what this is, is the last Frank Lloyd Wright designed hotel in the world. And so this community of 25,000 people had the last Frank Lloyd Wright designed hotel in the world that needed a uh, uh, $18.9 million makeover to get it up to, uh, brought back, back to, uh, to um, standards today's standards so they had uh, the community had had the property for probably five or six years they had raised all but uh, two million dollars of the of the construction cost and they were kind of stuck they had been stuck for about three years with not being able to fill that last couple million dollar gap and um, as a matter of fact when we got involved with it, it was the day before, a big portion of the money that um, that this community had for this project was coming from the state of Iowa. The state of Iowa wanted this building restored because of its historical significance, but um, they were ready to, they were coming out the next day to pull the money back out of the project. And I believe it was $13 million. I need to look that up, but it was a, a pretty good chunk of the of the total cost. They were going to pull the $13 million back and give that award that to another city that had a project that was shovel ready because they felt like the city was not taking advantage of this. It was just, you know, it was, it was being hoarded for too long. And so we got up at dark 30, ran up to Mason city, got a group of people together, explained how new markets worked. And, and we knew that we could fill, this uh, $2 million gap if we put our $10 million of allocation in. And um, what's not obvious about this project, um, comp especially compared to the IBM project, is uh, if you look at job creation on this, it's 11 jobs. And as you can imagine, it's 11 jobs that are housekeeping, you know, groundskeeping, some, some office staff, but it's really not 1,300 IBM jobs for $60 million. It's 11 jobs, and I forget what the, the benefits and payroll was for this, but it wasn't much. 
what what was important what what we saw in this project was that it was not going to create direct jobs it was going to create indirect and induced jobs this was a this was an economic development draw in the condition it was before renovation as a matter of fact the day we went up to look at it it was a rainy fall day and a bus uh, two big charter buses um, from I think it was a University of Minnesota pulled up and it was a bunch of architectural students and they were standing in the rain drawing and measuring this building um, and so it was an economic development draw before it was rehab and we knew once uh, once the project was completed that um, that it would stimulate you know restaurants around it um, you know, uh, bars, uh, clothing stores popped up. People that had buildings in the same vicinity as the hotel began to uh, uh, rehab their buildings because of all the activity around the project. Um, what really what got got very interesting. This is just a twist and something that we want to, you know, that we would be a resource for Randy on, is, you know, there's a couple things that could have caused this to be a flock over for for a lot of companies like us so I think one of the values that we have is that we're only looking out for our state of Iowa we're like Randy's looking to do and so you know if we're let's say we were trying to find projects in Iowa for Georgia we'd miss a project like this we'd hear of 11 direct housekeeping jobs and an 18 million dollar project and we'd say yeah that's great uh, it's really good for that community. We're not interested in doing that deal. It's just not enough, enough uh, direct jobs. What, what we knew was that this was a transformative project for this community because we knew the community and we were aware of it. We're close to it. And so we committed uh, our $10 million to this project. What was really interesting on the timing of this was look at when this happened. It was in 2008. And if you guys can remember back in 2008 I was right at the beginning of the Great Recession and within about two weeks of us committing our 10 million dollars and saving the state money in this project the Great Recession kicked in and a large employer in the city of Mason City laid off 120 employees and so after we committed to the deal we uh, the community went out and rebid the project because their bid was a couple years old and their construction costs went from, actually the construction costs were uh, 20.9 million, but they went from 20.9 million down to 18.9 million. All the contractors were hungry, everyone was looking to try to figure out a way to keep their employees uh, working, and so the cost of construction dropped by two million. Well, technically, in their capital stack, they had enough capital raised to do 18.9 million without our allocation, um, but we knew there would be some overruns. We also need, knew that, that we needed to have contingencies in place. So we as an organization decided to leave our allocation in, which meant that they had more capital than what they really needed. But as you can see, at the end of the project, we got to the end and there was $1.4 million of capital unallocated. And what we did as an organization was we could have pulled that back into our organization but we said, look, at, let's leave it in Mason City. That's a low-income census tract. There's other activities that could, could happen there. And so we left the benefit that wasn't entirely used up by this project in the census tract in Mason City to do other economic development activities in that census tract. And so if you flip to the next slide, the completed project. Um, Try to. It doesn't want to do it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, it, yeah. The project, uh, the project uh, um, is completed. I think they've had visitors from every state in the United States as well as um, uh, many foreign countries. Kind of Ness has uh, voted uh, Mason City as one of the top arch architectural cities uh, in the world, I think. There's a lot of uh, um, frankly right inspired properties in the community. Um, Two summers ago, they called me and invited me up, and I was part of um, their mortgage burning. So this little 47 or 42 room, I forget now, uh, boutique hotel uh, is completely out of debt. 
Um, if you go to their downtown now, like I said, there's all the, all this activity not going not out in the out in the suburbs, but pulled back into their inner core, and um, it's just really a project that we feel really proud that we were a part of. It was the only one left, and so. From, you know, actually a little before this project, we started to, uh, we had a concept and it wasn't anything that's required by the, the, the new market program, but what we do in most of our projects, unless, well, I'll just leave it at, in most of our projects, we require the project itself to do a pay it forward to their community. So um, if we if we do a deal and it's gonna bring $2.5 million of benefit to the project, we start out at somewhere around 10%. We say, all right, we're going to give you, you IBM, $2.5 million. We'd like you to take two, two, 250000 of that and find some other activity to support your community in that low-income census tract. So some of those pay-it-forward funds have went to, you know, uh, one of them went to a group here in Iowa that supports women that have been caught up in sex trafficking. We um, have helped with... Um, uh, oh, Steve, help me out here. Um, the Heart program in Dubuque. Uh, yeah, there was a program in Dubuque, Iowa, that um, kids were on the fast track to incarceration rather than fast track to um, uh, graduation from high school. They would teach them a trade half a day, and that group had no money, and so we helped support that program. Those kids went to 100% graduation rate. So the Pay It Forward uh, program really has been um, – like a secondary benefit to, um, to what we do. And, you know, and, and then just to give you a breath of the different kinds of projects that we do, you know, so we've done the IBM, you know, that IBM project technically wasn't to IBM. It, IBM used the building, but it was an economic development group in the city of Dubuque that owned the building and used the capital to buy down the cost of renovation so that the triple net lease would support the, the cost of the building, but we've done uh, boys and girls club here in, in Iowa, you know, that supports 2000 uh, kids, some uh, homeless living in shelters, graduation rate of those kids is higher than, um, than uh, the suburbs here in Des Moines. And so, you know, we, we try to really look at the projects, not at a real high level quickly, tell, you know, looking at just what are the direct jobs, but we try to look at what are the other impacts, like the Boys and Girls Club, you know, the idea there was, there wasn't a lot of job creation, but we were trying to help kids in a low income census tract break that cycle of poverty that they're in or break that cycle of not getting their education, and knowing that while that economic development activity isn't going to happen today. It is going to happen down the road if we can get those those kids, you know, with uh, education level that breaks them off of the cycle of, you know, public support. So, so Dan, I uh, appreciate you walking through that. We're sort of getting to the end of time. Yeah. And I want to leave a, I want a little bit of time for questions. So we are going to do something very similar to what they've done in Iowa. Uh, in our 30-year history, we have invested uh, close to Four million dollars in uh, extra revenues we have made through our SBA programs. CSRA Direct program now funded over 300 projects uh, with a CSRA Direct program. Uh, we have done for profits. We've done non profits. Uh, we did man and nutrition products, for example, in Fitzgerald. After we did uh, two projects in their industrial uh, park, uh, man and nutrition products that we did in Fitzgerald is a uh, works with Billy Graham Industries uh, out of Charlotte, and they make mana packs uh, that UNICEF and the Children's World Health Fund use uh, throughout, the, throughout the globe to take Georgia peanut butter and uh, work with the Carter Foundation and others and to, um, to put antibiotics and steroids that their workers use and created 24 jobs, but it, it buys a lot of peanut butter in Hill County and the Fitzgerald area and in the middle part of the state and the surrounding counties. Um, the ask of you all, so you can see the problem we've had in Georgia with these is we, we mentioned we've had four entities get these. One of them focuses solely on Metro Atlanta. The other three that have gotten them list a national service area, and there's no entity uh, that serves just the state of Georgia. And in our opinion, we think that's something that is needed. 
Georgia is one of the seven most underserved states, according to the Treasury Department. And so working with Dan, we have engaged the same um, application writer that we're in the process of writing the app right now. And two things that they gave us marching orders on, they think we have a great story. They think Treasury's going to love the fact that we've got this team lined up to help us with it. We think Treasury's going to love the fact that, uh, uh, that we've done 825 transformational projects uh, in our application. The group of loans they made us track, over 54% of the loans we've made have been in low income, income census tracks. Um, and so we think that's going to work well. The two things they've asked us to do is, to, is number one, get letters from investors that you can see here from banks. And we have had 20 of the top 25 banks in Georgia in asset size have already written us letters of interest on the program. We have in, between 250 uh, to 300 million in uh, letters of interest from Georgia banks to participate in the credits if we were able to get them. Uh, every corner of the state, north, south, east, west, uh, we, we've gained support on it. What we need all of you on the phone with, to do is help us with this piece here. The key in getting uh, the credits and not getting them and being in that 25% that's approved and not the 75% that's declined is having transformational but for projects uh, in our pipeline. We have to show Treasury a pipeline of 200 million. We probably have 20 projects already lined up and truth, we probably have 200 million. What we're working on is we want to make sure every city, uh, every county, um, from the top of the state to the bottom of the state, that if they have a project that is out there right now, there's a key transformational project, and every town's got them. Here in Augusta, it's the Sibley Mill. Um, it is uh, it's a redevelopment of the area around uh, Augusta University Medical Center. Uh, we've got a couple in the old Penny Bank building, which is one of the first African-American charter banks in the country. They're buildings we would like to get done. But the 20 leads we've received so far, we're receiving similar deals from other communities around the state. But we need to put you in our pipeline, and that's no guarantee we're going to do the pipeline. As I said, you send us a project, we're not committing to do that. We're saying if we would have had the credits, that uh, that this is a project that, that was on the table that, that we could have done. By the time we get the allocation, we apply uh, around November 1st, we get the allocation. In July of 2021, the timing could be impeccable if we were to get, you know, a, a, a 40 or 50 million dollar uh, allocation. Uh, the uh, consultants tell us that usually uh, first timers, uh, new entities, have a tough time getting the credits right out of the gate. So we're prepared if we don't get them in the first round, we're going to circle back and we'll try this again in 22, uh, 2022. This is a a long methodical uh, process that. Uh, that everybody needs to be prepared for, that if we're going to build it and make it work for the state, that, um, that, 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 that we have to be prepared to, to hang on and, and hang in there a long time. The, uh, the letters of interest we got from the bank, this is similar to what they have written us in the other letters of interest. But the big thing, and, and uh, we've given Stephanie a pipeline form that's got more detail than this, but this is an example. Uh, just, you know, on a surgical manufacturer, I have to check that out of Dan's application uh, in Iowa Community Development as one of their previous rounds. But we would need to know definitely that census tract that it's going in, how many jobs it's going to create. We need to know the story. Uh, and we need to know how the, all the other impacts that it's going to have on the community um, for it to be an effective pipeline story. So the ask of you all today, um, the reason Larry was kind enough, uh, Hansel was kind enough, is on our advisory board. To, um, to set up this call with all of you is to get the word out and let you know we're trying to do this. As I said, I, I, we are not in this for, for money. Um, a lot of folks get into the new market tax credit game for money. We are in it for impact. Um, I've lived throughout the state of Georgia. I love, I love Atlanta. I watch the Braves every night. I have two kids who live there. I love going to Atlanta. But there are, there are 80 counties in Georgia that, uh, that are losing population right now. Uh, we have 12 counties in the state of Georgia that have less population today than they had in 1860. Uh, some of the economic conditions, especially for people of color, especially for people who are overalls and work in the dirt every day, are having a very, very tough time. And having been with the organization for 30 years, we've tried to go at this. We didn't ask anyone for any money. We put the $50,000 up to hire the consultants ourselves. This is a way for us to give back to the state of Georgia. And we need everyone's help. We've had a lot of help, as you can tell already. 
but for us to be effective and really do these transformational projects. There's going to be some frustration. If we get this allocation, we get a $40 million allocation, that may be five projects, but there are going to be five really, really good projects somewhere around the state. And if we Randy, apply for future allocation, we'll get more and more money. So, Randy, yeah, we have just, I wanted to have you address just a couple questions before we uh, end today. Um, we had two questions come in. What's the minimum project size that would still make the financial cost of the New York tax credit structure? The journal's going to be around an $8 million project, probably, you know, right in that game. We're probably out of the gate as a new, um, as a new CDE are not going to want to go below that. Dan and them have a very unique feature that they, they commit to do a certain number of small deals. We will commit to do that over time, but one of the things we're going to have to do uh, to meet the Treasury um, accounting com compliance, we've got to have a reserve uh, to build up our exit fund, and so it's going to be very difficult for us to do smaller transactions out of the gate. But long term, that is a plan of ours. We've seen one in one of the three poorest counties in Georgia in our pipeline that employs 300 people, is looking to expand, they're looking at two locations. We are trying to bring in some of the bigger banks right now to fund that transaction. It's smaller, uh, but hopefully uh, we might be able to get some new market tax credits on that. If we get that situation where we got to a, uh, a, a, an extremely um, needy area, uh, hopefully, if, if we could not do it, hopefully we could bring others in that perhaps could, uh, some national players. Can you use the tax credits in combination with other tax credits, such as historic tax credits um, or other types of incentive programs? So certainly they can. Uh, we did a deal uh, in, uh, we're on the Georgia line and sort of all South Carolina. We did Reclaim, which is an appliance manufacturer that was in Graniteville, South Carolina, the site of uh, the U.S.'s most deadly train accident. Um, not only did we use uh, new market tax credits and an SBA 504 loan, but we also used textile tax credits. The state of South Carolina has, along with historic tax credits. So it was layered with a variety of tax credits in that transaction. Okay. And then I've got one last question. It says, are you looking at new market tax credits for four cell housing and DDS QCTs? Um, affordable, you know, LIHTC is generally how those are done. Uh, mm -hmm. we, the, Traditionally, there is a break off that if you're going to do a housing component in new market tax credits, you can have no more uh, than 80% than, than of the revenue coming from rental income. So if housing is going to be attached to it, it's always got to have in new markets a mixed use. I'll give you an example. In 2019, there's a great project done in North Athens with new market tax credits. It was $17.5 million allocation from two national players that Dan mentioned. They put a grocery store in the bottom uh, on the side of the old Catholic school in Athens. They put um, some mixed retail in there on the storefronts and put 34 loft apartments above it. So you can do it, but it's going to have to have that mixed use component and meet, uh, meet the eligibility standards that the Treasury and the IRS have put on this program. Great. Um, Randy and uh, Iowa team, Dan and your team, I uh, just want to say thank you so much um, for providing a great presentation and lots of information. We will have this presentation available shortly online um, as well as the recording, um, uh, but um, I can also uh, send, send the presentation to you directly if you drop me an email. So. That's, uh, that's easy too. So, um, uh, thank you so much. And okay, you know, you get my email address on the end of the, uh, on the end of the presentation. Uh, you should have it. There you go. Yeah. If you have a project you want to include, if you, if you will email me, that's my phone number and my email, and I'll be happy to, to give you an intake sheet that we can include that project uh, in our pipeline. We may not do that project, but what you'll do is you'll help the entire state with us having a, a viable um, and, and very strong uh, pipeline that's going to give us a competitive advantage in applying up to these credits. Great. Excellent. Thank you so much for the fantastic information. Please tell Larry, thank you. Dan, uh, thank you for joining us from Iowa and sort of giving, and Steve, and, and giving the folks in Georgia sort of a sense of how it's been used in the state of Iowa. And hopefully we can we can build here what you guys have done up there. All right. Thank you. Good luck. It's a pleasure. All right. Enjoy your Good rental, luck, everybody. everybody.